Welcome to Real Estate Strategy Lab, and this is your host, Jeff Koga, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 4. And in this episode, we're going to talk about how to never buy leads from lead vendors and how to harvest your own leads. Now, why am I going to talk about this is because I'm a firm believer that you should literally harvest your own leads. And with technology and what I'm about to talk about today, you'll find out exactly how to do that. So before we get into more details on what we'll talk about today, let's kind of recap uh, some of the episodes from season two because it's going to all kind of tie in and dovetail and you'll get a better understanding and we're going to show you step by step today on how to actually put all of this together. So let's go and recap. So season two, episode one, it was all about the state of the real estate marketing address, uh, meaning that I talked about how the market has changed and why it's becoming harder to get literally quote unquote more deals, regardless if you're a real estate investor, real estate agent, or even a loan originator. All right, especially in a hyper competitive marketplace if you're in a metropolitan area. And uh, um, I also discussed about are we going to see another boom or a crash? Because that has been kind of the talk of the town uh, for the last several months or so, especially this year in 2017. And uh, in this episode, I talk about what my take is and uh, giving you some stats and data on exactly what I believe will happen. And then I went on to talk about what I'm doing to fight the market change right? Because we know the market is changing because it's called a market for a reason and how I'm preparing for that particular change. And if you want to go ahead and listen in on that episode, go ahead and subscribe on iTunes or by going to the content upgrade link right on the screen. And if you are listening to this as you're working out or you're running around or doing something as an audio version, try to check this out in the video version so you can follow along and see the actual slides from this particular podcast episode. So that was episode one of season two. Now in season two, episode two, we went into uh, kind of why you don't have a lead generation problem. So we started stacking on top of understanding kind of the state of the real estate marketing, okay, the condition of the market. And then I said, hey, why you don't have a lead generation problem and how I got there. So asking different questions on why you don't have a lead generation problem and something that I like to call how big data marketing is changing the way you market for Ever. And I go into details on how I discovered it and why it's working. And it ties into the story of how history never repeats itself, but it rhymes. And I'm kind of a geek when it comes to understanding history. And it's really important to understand that because, again, a market goes up and down. You have a boom and bust. And you have to understand the cycles. And then I go into more of what I'm working on now to generate more business for my real estate business and what my clients are doing as well. So if you want to listen in on that particular uh, episode, make sure you subscribe again on iTunes and check it out. Or go ahead and get your content upgrade by going to giftfromjeff.com forward slash season two EP two. And again, you can check it out there. Um, and then we went into uh, season two, episode three. We stacked on top of that once again, and then we went into the new way to get motivated sellers and buyers, and I kind of pulled back the curtain and really talked about how to get any motivated sellers and buyers, cell phone numbers, email or both. And what this training was all about was a recent boot camp training I did with my high end clients. And I inserted that training module into the podcast. So again, if you're listening to on the audio and you're listening to episode three of season two, then I highly recommend for you to check out the video version or go get your content upgrade. So you can see the video by going to giftfromjeff.com forward slash season two EP three. All right. Now, this brings us to episode four, which is the one I'm recording today and which is the one you're listening to right now. So in this episode, what you're going to learn is literally an overview of how to never buy leads from lead vendors and how to harvest your own leads. So I'm going to show you how to do all of this, and it does not require you to understand anything about tech. 
Okay, because people are like, oh my gosh, do I need to have this new software? Do I need to have this new website? Do I need to have the CRM? Do I need to ha understand social media marketing? And it doesn't require any of that stuff. If you literally have capability to send email and receive email and you have a cell phone or a way to call people, you're going to be set. Okay. And it's an absolute game changer. And uh, this is probably one of my best work that I have done in the career of uh, consulting and coaching. And I've been getting uh, great reviews from all of my clients that uh, uh, participated in that particular uh, uh, training. All right. And then we're going to talk about how an appended data will look like. And we're going to show you step by step step. And I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step video tutorial of how to do it. And at the end of this podcast, I'm going to have a special podcast listener bonus just for you because you listened in. Now, keep in mind this podcast episode, I'm taking content and training from an, a coaching program that I have, a one-year coaching program that actually currently right now, um, I'm charging people $15,997 for, and I'm taking a small snippet of that um, and inserting it into this podcast episode. So as I said earlier, I highly recommend individuals to watch the video version of this because it's going to help you out versus just listening it to it on the audio version. All right. And the reason why I decided to create this podcast episode is once again, because of our listeners and because of listeners just like you reaching out to me uh, with an email and sending me feedback, which I absolutely love because that allows me to uh, understand, hey, you know what, what are you missing or what are you not understanding? understanding and allows me to go ahead and deliver better content every single time I do this. And this is an actual uh, message from a lady named Christy Ortiz. And she says, just found your podcast and I love it. And the fact that you love it, I love it too. And it says, I listened to your last three episodes at least four times. And if I had to guess why you have to listen to it four times, it's probably you were listening to audio first and then went video. Um, so that's why I recommend to watch it, the video version, and get the content upgrade so you have the slides too. And then she goes on to say, can you do a high level and a step-by-step -step on how to append data and what it will look like? So because of that, Christy, um, I decided to put together this particular um podcast episode and I am going to be inserting some trainings from my coaching program that as I said earlier um, it's a one-year coaching program that other people have paid fifteen thousand nine hundred ninety seven dollars for me to actually work with them and work on their business together and I decided to take a really really small portion of that and then insert into this training so that way I can give you the high level as well as show you the step-by-step -step on how to append data and what it will look like all right so before we go into the meat and potatoes of today's podcast training I want to give you a warning and a discussion Disclaimer. To understand the power of this, you must first unlearn what you've learned in the past. And this is the most difficult thing to do. And I challenge you to keep an open mind. And I challenge you to live in the world of possibility. And I challenge you to say, what if? And if you want that content upgrade for this and the physical slides for this training, then make sure you go to giftfromjeff.com season, the number two, the numeric two, EP4 to download the slides and be able to see the video as well. Now, earlier I said, to understand the power of this, you must first unlearn what you learn. Now, why is that important? Is because otherwise, you will rationalize your terrible behavior. I know that's kind of a boom, iron fist in your face, um, but fundamentally, all right, all businesses are in the arithmetic business, meaning it's a math business, and everything else is technically a derivative of that, meaning most businesses fail or succeed because the operator either doesn't know its number or knows its number. And we all tend to have a subconscious psychological tendency to rationalize our terrible behavior, meaning that we rationalize and says, ah, you know what? I don't really know my customer acquisition costs, but I'll rationalize and says, I'll figure it out later. Hey, I don't really have a tax strategy behind the revenue that I'm generating, but I'll figure it out later. 
right? And we all know later becomes never. So this is why it's so important to understand that all businesses, fundamentally, it's an arithmetic business and he or she who knows their numbers better than their competition is always going to win. All right. And what's the implication of this rationalization of bad behavior that I just talked about? You literally, if you rationalize your bad behavior, you become a patsy. All right. You become gullible and you fall for the shiny object syndrome. Okay. Or the shiny objects that people are like, oh my gosh, this is going to revolutionize my business, change my business forever, transform it like overnight. Okay. And you fall for that and you become a patsy. So in lead generation, for you to not become a patsy, you must have at least a baseline information for comparison. All right. Meaning that you have to at least understand mathematically um, what are some baseline things in lead generation. So meaning how much does it cost for you to generate a lead or get a lead? And to give you some examples, here are some kind of a broad stroke examples from my personal experience. OK, so Google leads, meaning if you generate a seller or buyer leads through Google, meaning like the Google Display Network or the uh, Google AdWords, right? It can range anywhere from twenty dollars to fifty dollars, even plus. It used to be a lot cheaper in the mid 2000s, but it has dramatically gone up. And in certain metropolitan area, like in my case, I'm in Southern California. It can be literally like $60, $70, $80, even $100 plus, depending on what type of keywords you're bidding on. All right. But it's about 20 to $50. And then from there, Facebook used to be really, really cheap. All right. But as people have started using it a lot more and not only using it, but using it in a bad way by literally hitting like the boost button, thinking that's going to help their real estate business. All right. The cost has gone up. We used to get 30 cents leads, 20 cents leads, 15 cents leads, 10 cents leads from Facebook. Right three, four, five years ago, but now has gone up to about $3 to $7. And sometimes depending on what it is, it's up to like $10 or $15. All right. Now, not to say if you convert one, okay, it's going to pay for all the marketing in, in the year. Right. And that's how you kind of the rationalization of bad behavior. Now, what are other ones? Okay. Examples, lead vendors, meaning that you subscribe to a lead vendor that's going to quote unquote generate leads for you. It can cost anywhere from $5 to $50 plus. Right. What are other ones? A list brokers. Right. You go to a list broker and says, hey, you know what? Give me a list of uh, sellers and buyers. All right. It's going to cost you anywhere from a dollar to two hundred dollar plus, depending on how good the list is and how the list was harvested. OK. And if you do another type of lead generation where it's an actual lead call transfers. All right. Meaning that the company generates the lead and they actually will qualify the lead. OK with a phone call and then they transfer it to you like a warm call, right? That can easily be a hundred dollars to $150 plus, right? If you're in the mortgage industry, you guys know this, right? It can easily cost $150, even $200, $250. All right. Now the bottom line, I'm giving you these numbers as comparison is because this is your baseline. All right. Even though you may not know how to generate leads on Google, even on Facebook, or maybe I've never, you know, gotten leads from lead vendors or even work with list brokers to get leads or even did the lead call transfers. At least you have a baseline comparison on this, because at the end of the day, what you're about to learn today in this training, OK, it boils down to the definition of what is a lead. All right. What is a lead? And a lead really is just simply the name of a person, a property address, if they're like a seller, all right, and a way to contact them and under how to contact them, it boils under what a cell phone number or a phone number, typically a cell phone number and an email. That's it. And then once you make connection or as in once you get into a conversation with that quote unquote lead, then you will find out how good of a lead it is. But until you do that, you never know. So the only thing that you can really compare it to or the baseline comparison you can do is just saying, hey, all things being equal, what is it? It's a name, a property address, a way to contact them, a cell phone number, phone number, email or both. That's it. All right. Anything outside of that, you're rationalizing your bad behavior. 
or you're rationalizing the sales pitch from a lead generation company, a sales pitch for some other gurus or some sales pitch from a list broker or some sales pitch from even your own broker who says that, hey, you know what? These leads are gold. Right. And this is what I mean by the implication of rationalization of bad behavior when you don't know the arithmetic or the math in your business when it comes to lead generation. So hopefully that made sense. So let's go ahead and get into the first uh, training module that I have taken out from my high end clients uh, coaching program, my one year program. And I'm going to insert it right after this. And this is all about buying data and appending your data. So please, warning, okay, please have a pen and paper ready. And my shameless plug here is if you enjoy this type of training and this type of podcast, okay, make sure to take me up on my special limited time offer for my podcast listeners at the end of this particular training, okay? So here it goes. Here's the video from the training. All right, so in this training, I'm going to talk about buying data and appending your data. And when you actually learn how to do this and add this as a skill set for your business as an entrepreneur business owner, you're going to discover how to never buy leads from lead vendors ever, ever again. OK, and how to harvest your own leads that no one else actually has access to, which is pretty darn cool. OK, now let's cover this. Why should you buy data and append your data? Well, first off is you're probably asking what type of data should I buy? Okay. And then you're probably asking what is data pending and other things that we're going to cover today is the strategy of owning the farm versus leasing a farm. We'll talk about that. And then we'll also talk about when you append the data, you can shotgun market and sniper rifle market uh, using the direct bypass communication marketing. So when you actually buy the data and you append the data and when you get phone numbers and email, now you can go ahead and do either a shotgun marketing or a sniper rifle marketing, depending on the size of the data that you're actually going after. And rest assured, it is the cheapest way to generate your own targeted leads. All right. Um, versus trying to go ahead and use like direct mail billboards and all those other stuff that's out there. Okay. So, uh, what type of data should I buy? Let me go and answer that first okay now you should buy data that can get you ROI fast now it's kind of a given but we'll talk about exactly what type of uh, data you should buy more in the personal marketing plan uh, which is actually on a different training because we go in depth actually covering that step by step and certain exercises you should do to discover in your marketplace uh, what type of data you should get because remember real estate is at a local level so it's all different now obviously if you're doing it at a national scale there's a little bit different too but you want to target in certain pockets first. Okay. Now this is the most cost effective way to build your pipeline. When you combine this with the direct bypass communication marketing. So you already know what the cost of direct bypass communication marketing, how cheap it is. So when you actually add this, being able to get the data and pen the data and you actually do that at scale, now your phone is ringing like crazy. So let's talk about next. What is data pending? All right. Now data pending is you send your data to a company or the data pending company, and that company will match their data against your data that you sent to them. And then they're going to come back with phone numbers and emails that they believe it, which is a good match for your data. Now, typically this is used by fortune 500 companies. All right. And I only discovered this because I have a good friend of mine who actually has a startup company, which is valued over at $50 million. And he told me about this. And as he broke down how he was actually acquiring customers, that's when my life changed because I was never taught this and I never understood this stuff even existed. All right. Now data can be matched against something called co reg. Now I'm telling you this just for context purposes. Um, so that way, you know, what co reg stands for is co registration data. So on the internet and or other marketing pieces like in magazines and even TV commercials, right. And things like that. Uh, when people call a marketing company or when they call a company, they presume that they're going to get a service for, but in reality, it's a marketing company on their terms and services. They're going to have something on there basically that's 
says, hey, by the way, you called them and if you give them your you know, phone number and your email, they can do whatever the heck that they want with your data. All right. As in like they can go ahead and lease it, sell it, right? Call you, market, do whatever they want. Okay. And that's what's called co-registration. And sometimes a data pending company actually has a sub agreement with a huge co-registration company and they're matching your data. All right. But bottom line is this, it's cheaper than you think. And it's the number one cheapest way to actually harvest your own data and harvest your own leads ultimately. Okay. Versus buying leads from leads vendors. All right. Now, Let's talk about next the strategy of owning the farm versus leasing a farm. So if you have ever bought leads from a lead vendor, there's typically a couple of challenges and problems. Number one, the leads are not that good of a quality. That's number one. And because of that, they're charging you an arm and a leg. Okay. That's the second thing. And, uh, but third, but not least, the biggest thing is this, is that this is the process, right? The lead vendors. Okay gives you the lead and then from there you got to market the lead you got to do some marketing okay now previously before this you might be doing direct mail okay most lead companies they may not give you an email if you do you know it may not be a good one but the point is that you got to do some marketing all right now the challenge again when you are essentially quote unquote leasing a farm because remember there's an umbilical cord that's tied with you and the actual lead vendors because you have to continuously pay them all the time um and if you don't guess what you don't get any leads right and the challenge number one is obviously the umbilical cord that's tied to them but really the bigger challenge is this because the lead vendors are in business, your competition is actually physically buying the leads from the actual, probably the lead vendors. And they're doing the exact same type of marketing in the marketing channel. So it's becoming really, really oversaturated and the effectiveness actually physically comes down because remember this, okay? Lead vendors are in business to sell you leads. And if you buy from them, your competition is too, most likely. So if you have ever tried to do an expired or FESBO or whatever, they've been, wow, I've been called multiple times from people like you guys, right? And it's because your competition is doing that, right? Versus what? Owning the farm means that you actually are harvesting the data, okay? You're creating your own leads. So how does that work? Well, you get the data, all right? And we'll talk about where and how. Then you append the data by getting the phone numbers and emails right here. And then you do your marketing. So... If one month, because because you get busy and you decide that, hey, you know what, I don't want to market this one uh, to the data, well, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Versus if you actually, from a lead vendor, if one month you decide not to market because you're overwhelmed, your competition is still marketing to them and you're going to lose some business. Versus if you harvest your own data and you own the farm, then guess what? You can take your time as long as you want or fast as you want and your competition doesn't know how to do this. I rest assure you, your competition is not doing this all right all right now what type of data should you first buy because we're going to talk about here right the data because that's a starting point so why picking the right data is key to getting your phones ringing fast okay the right one all right and ROIing it all right now let's talk about this not all leads are created equal all right, so this is kind of my fancy chart I created where this is literally the line of interest level of leads needing you. And I'm, I'm a firm believer that there's four phases, phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four. And on the left, it says uh, might want to do business later. So it's a longer what follow up. Okay, the other one is I'm ready to do business today. All right, so let's talk about these four phases and then, then it will kind of tie into what type of data you should get. So phase one is people that you're going after a data pool that you're going after and they're saying, Hey, what problem? They don't even know that their problem exists. All right. They're the least likely to do business with you. Now you can plant the seed and you can follow up with them later on. Right now. Phase two is I can handle my own problems. You might run across those all the time, right? I can handle it. I can sell it on my own people, right? So, okay. Um, and then the third one is I'm searching for answers. So when they're searching for answers, there clearly means that there's some type of pain that's going on there. Okay. Some, some little thing that's, you know, affecting them to actually search for answers. And then the fourth one is I need you to come save me now type of people. That's the phase four people. All right. So my question to you is if you're going to get data and if you're going to go ahead and market, okay, which one would you pick starting off? 
Now, if you probably said phase four or phase three, you're 100% correct. And that's what I recommend individuals to go after. And as you get better at this, then you can go ahead and do spillover into phase two or phase one if you like, if you start running out of data of phase three and phase four because your business is growing, all right? So what type of uh, data that can you go after that's in phase three or phase four, okay? Let me show you, okay? This is called the uh, direct bypass communication marketing and this is kind of a spreadsheet let me actually move this over a little bit here um so you guys can see this um so these are sellers that will call you again eviction inherent what problem there tax lien inherent problem phase three phase three right or it can be phase four expired uh what it can be possibly phase three right because they're searching for answers all right or it can be actually phase two i can handle my own problem right so again canceled same thing fezbos more are considered what i can handle my own problems but it might be i'm searching for answers okay absentees now absentees there's a lot more data that you can get on this but absentees are very broad okay because that data can range anywhere from phase one to phase four so again more data but it can range from phase one to phase four an uh, inheritance all right same thing the data pool is much smaller um, but it's probably typically phase three or phase four all right now pre foreclosures all right or list pendants lists okay these are typically phase three phase four and depending on how much how closer you are to the actual foreclosure sale date it can be actually phase four all right probate all right now if they have uh, a probate okay it's the same thing it's phase three phase four property violation uh depending on the severity of the property violation it's phase three phase four divorce again the, depending on the type of divorce it can be a phase three phase four bankruptcy same thing phase three phase four so do you are you starting to seeing why you should go after these types of sellers because it's because it's a lot easier to do all right now previously to using direct bypass communication marketing um and using a data and data pending service guess what um going after phase Phase three and phase four people were actually really expensive because everyone else is like sending out like direct mail and things like that and or if you buy the leads from lead vendors they know that these leads are hard to generate so guess what they're charging you an arm and a leg versus doing it with a you know buying your own data and then appending the data and getting the phone numbers and emails it cuts the cost down to like almost by 100 200 percent all right so the next question is where can i get the data all right, that's a big question. They say, hey, Jeff, I get it. I get the concept. Where can I get the data? Well, let me show you how, all right? So let's go and go with some easy ones first, and then we're gonna start expanding, okay? So expired and cancels. So instead of going to a lead vendor and buying some stuff, right, and things like that, expires and cancels. Where, do you, where can you get those? Really simple, if you're in this business. The MLS, okay? Just go on there. Pull the expires and cancels, all right? Go last six months. Go a year, okay? Pull them off the MLS. Really, really simple stuff, right? Now let's talk about the next one. Pre-foreclosure, probate, property violation, eviction, tax liens, tax liens, okay? Now, typically, these fall under a category of what we like to call public records. All right. Now, a property violation may not have an actual public record. Certain cities may not actually put a lien against the property, but certain cities do. All right. So it's your ability to know which one is which. And then it's actually you have to do some research. Like in L.A. City, they have something called an abatement list, which is an actual recording that they do on title. And you can actually pull that from L.A. City website or right? public records. You know, OK, foreclosure, same thing. Right. Because they have to file a notice of default, notice of trustee, list pendant, same thing, probate. Um, now, obituaries are a little bit different okay obituaries are not public records but it's really it is public records in a sense that it's in a newspaper right so someone has to do some research to pull that out and that's where some manual research comes into play that you can do yourself or in that case you can buy someone eviction same thing tax lien same thing all right so public records now the next one is absentee this is probably the one of the most easiest data to get access to why is because all you have to do is go to a title company or in your case if you have access to mls there should be something called realist that you can actually pull and most realists you can pull up to twenty thousand records a month that you can pull on there all right now let's talk about some couple more harder ones to pull all right and which is like inheritance uh well, i have probate in here but really it's probate to obituaries okay uh divorce post-divorce bankruptcy and property violations all right, these are a little bit more harder to pull. It depends on, and I've done 
deals all across the nation, okay? So it, it's, it becomes a little bit difficult, especially it's labor intensive to pull. I used to actually have a virtual assistant pull these types of stuff and it becomes a, a managing nightmare, all right? Um, so I discovered a particular source to actually get this. And to this day, I'm not exactly sure how they get it, but other than the fact that it's actually data has been really, really good. It's proven and tested with my platinum clients as well as that's why I'm giving it to you guys because you're part of this actual training. It, it's this, okay? It, it actually comes from a source where it's not even real estate related. Well, it is real estate related, but the people that are marketing to these people are not in the business of buying and selling real estate. They're actually in the legal business, okay? And uh, I believe that's one of the reasons why the actual data is really good. It's because they're actually not marketing as a real estate agent, real estate investor, or mortgage, right? A mortgage individual. The, the place that I'm actually getting the leads from and after spending countless hours and time trying to figure this all out is actually buying leads where attorneys buy leads, all right? So it's an actual place called Attorney Leads on Demand. Really, really good stuff. One of the best places I found uh, to be able to get access to data. And in certain parts of the country, they have more data than others, all right? Now, there are a smaller group of company and they're really good. I recommend you contact the gentleman name of Don. So it's Don spelled. I know it's a weird spelling, but D-A-U-N-E at attorneyleadsondemand.com and send them an email. And uh, these are some of the data that you can get and just let them know that, hey, you know what? I'm interested in your services and let them know where you're interested and how many leads you actually have available. All right. Now, here's some couple of tips that I want to give you. Okay. Because they're really good. Okay. Um, but again, don't share this outside of our community. All right. Um, there's a reason why I do the things that I do and I do share this with you, uh, but do not share it outside. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I keep it very, very tight. Okay. Um, but let me give you some couple tips on buying data from anyone. Okay. Why is because as you start growing, you don't know, you want to buy data. Okay. Big thing is this. Okay. Always start big. All right. Data providers hate to work with people who only buys like less than 2000 records. All right. They absolutely hate it. Some of them, like they have a minimum record. You have to get like 5,000, 10,000. Right. They ha absolutely hate it. Why is because they're trying to do volume. Okay. So here's how to do this. Okay. You want to negotiate with the max buy first. So you ask them, Hey, how much data you have available? And then you negotiate with the max buy. And then guess what? You go ask for a sample, AKA your test, your sample. So start big and then come down. All right. Now, typically, all right. Now, again, this is kind of a rule of thumb. It's not like a cardinal rule. If you break it, you're screwed or something like that. Okay. It's really not. The, the test needs to be closer to like 2000. When you start going under that, people start getting like pissed off at you. They really do. Okay. And if they smell that you're actually brand new or you're not going to buy too many data, they may do one batch and they're going to actually stop selling you data. All right. It's just the way it is and how they just operate. Um, so because the majority of the data providers that either are super, super big company and uh, they're selling like millions and millions of records, uh, from like one cent or less than a cent. Okay. Now, uh, the one that I gave you, the attorney leads on boutique type of company. So they're not huge yet. They're not like huge, 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 but that's one of the reasons why I believe that their data is actually pretty damn good, but their data is a little bit more expensive. Okay. Meaning that some of the data could be ranged from like up to like 75 cents. I've never paid more than 75 cents with them. Okay. So, um, but I have actually negotiated with them on certain deals uh, by buying in bulk, like close to like 40 cents, 30 cents, and even 20 cents, 10 cents. Okay. But I do buy in bulk. So if you have a budget, okay. So here's the key, key. All right. If you have a budget or if you're not comfortable because the first time you're actually doing something like this, all right. All right. Come up with a budget that you're comfortable with. So that way, so that way, you can say, hey, okay, I'm comfortable doing this. All right. But here's the key. All right. When you have a budget, you want to tell them that you're authorized for a test batch of your budget. Okay. So you say, hey, I'm only authorized to do X amount of dollars for a test campaign. And then you wait for them to respond. They're either going to say, no, I can't do this. Or, or they're going to say, hey, well, the minimum is this. Okay. So whatever they say, all right, then whenever, whatever they say, then your next line, all right, is you're going to have to say, this is your power line. All right. Power, power, like boom. All right. You're going to say, how close can you get to that number by adjusting your records? All right. How close can you get to that number by adjusting your records? Then you got to shut up. Don't say anything. All right. And all of this negotiation, typically you want to put in like 
one or two days in between. Now, sometimes, you know, you can do it in like one day or a couple of hours if they're emailing you back and forth, okay? Um, but you wanna actually put in like literally one or two days, all right? And you wanna do them during like regular business hours, all right? Because if they if you start emailing them like at super late at night and things like that, then they might discover that, hey, you're maybe a smaller company because remember, most people work like nine to five and things like that, right? So again, be cognizant about that because again, they just absolutely hate to work with smaller companies. I know that. Ask me how I know that because I have done that and they've said no and I learned that the hard way. All right. Now, let's talk about what is data appending. All right. So data appending is one, you get your data. We talked about how and where to get the data. Right. So once you have the data, then you send it to to an appending service, meaning they're going to append your service and they're going to add actual what phone numbers and emails to your actual records that you send them. All right. Now, most data uh, pen services requires a monthly spend and that monthly spend is in the, the high thousands. OK, and it can cost per record wise anywhere from a dollar to two dollars a record that they, they append. All right. Not only that, but they're going to require a setup fee for you actually to do that because they're going to set up an account for you uh, so you can do those types of, you know, huge uh, data pen. OK. Now, again, going back to, again, understanding the, the industry, understanding this marketplace, you have your big guys and then you have your smaller folks, okay, like your boutique ones. The boutique ones are a little bit more hands-on. They may be a little bit more slower, all right, um, but they can give you probably the best price and best service, in my opinion. And the one I've discovered that works really, really well, and they kind of specialize in mobile cell phones, okay, records, and I highly recommend them. Why is because they specialize in mobile and you using the direct what? Bypass communication marketing, you want mobile cell phones, right? To market as well as email, which you're gonna be learning as well later on, okay? So uh, the place is called privatedatapenservices.com. Um, get hold of a guy named John, all right? John is the actual owner of the company and uh, uh, get hold of him. Uh, he is kind of a pain in the butt to work with, but he's a really super cool guy when you actually get on his good side. Um, uh, but here's the thing, okay? When you purchase data from any data pen service, regardless from private data pen services.com or wh wherever it is, right? Okay. All right. Here's the cardinal rule that you have to remember because as you do these types of campaign, guess what? Okay. It, they're going to come back and they're going to tell you some couple things. Okay. Because when if someone asks, Hey, where'd you get my phone number? Okay. Never ever disclose to a seller and buyer where you were buying the data from. If anyone ever asked you, just say public records, then pivot and move on. Okay. You got to do that. All right. Never ever do that. Why is because some of the places that you're actually buying the data from are like, like credit agencies, like experience and things like that. Okay. So don't ever, ever disclose where the heck you're getting it from. So again, smaller company, but they seem to have the best data uh, I've personally tested. And here's the big one. Okay. There is no setup fee. And it starts about a dollar per appended record. And they do have a minimum that you have to get, which is like 500 records. Um, but I believe, you know, depending on your negotiation skills and things like that, right, and get to know them, um, you may be able to get the phone numbers and emails, okay? So again, um, you know, phone numbers and emails for about a dollar, right? That's for me is like, right? Like you can run like PPC campaigns and you can run uh, all kinds of, you know, Google ads, LinkedIn ads, Twitter ads, Facebook ads, and all that stuff. And it can cost you three, four, five bucks the lead, maybe even down to a dollar, but you're not going to be able to get possibly the phone number versus in this case, they're going to give you for any phone numbers or email. Okay. Phone number plus email. I'm sorry. They're going to give you it for a dollar, right? Or even less depending on the volume that you do. So, which is super, super cool in my opinion. All right. So let's kind of, uh, give you some couple tips on using data append services. Okay. Here's number one. All right. When you send the data over to those companies, you got to keep your data clean before submitting. Right? I learned this the hard way. When I did that, they said sorry, and then like they stopped working with me immediately. Um, I think is that's because they probably figured out that I didn't know what the heck I was doing. Okay, so here, here's some other things. Okay, remove unnecessary information. So for example, if you have data in like a CRM and when you export that data out, all right, and when you export it, typically it's going to be a CSV format. And if you have like notes of the stuff that you have on there, delete all that note stuff. Okay, delete it. All right, here's some other things, okay? Always send your file as a CSV, 
Okay, don't send it as an Excel over to those data pen services because that's a rookie mistake, right? Because rookie mistake is saving files as Excel, all right? The individuals who actually do huge amount of data, all right, we only use CSV file. Why is because when you do it in as Excel and you have like million records and stuff like that, that's a huge file and it's hard to deal with, all right? So again, CSV. And here's another big, big one, okay? have an organized file name. Don't put like my best deletes or something like that, right? Or I'm going to make millions as your like file name. Okay. So you keep it clean. Okay. My way of doing it is I put year month. Okay. I put it together. And then I push dash and I put the uh, type of file. So for example, I always put, you know, like the year 2021 dash 05, which is the month like May dash foreclosure. And the reason why I put the year dash and then the month is when you start buying a lot of, a lot of data and you have like a file in your actual like desktop, right? Then if you want to sort it on which one is the new data, it will actually sort by the actual what? The name of the file, starting name, alphabetical orders. And if you put the year first, they'll start, right? So again, you can buy the data, right? Like the old data, and then you can append it later on six months down the road or a year down the road okay? and keep on recycling, all right? Now here's a big tip, okay? Try to communicate via email. All right, with all these data pen services. Um, so you can have records of the pricing plus the smaller data pen companies uh, won't even respond back if they think that you're a small time. So a lot of these smaller companies, they, they don't have like a huge sales team, like a other like company like Experian or something like that, right? Like you call them, they have like a big old office, okay? And they're going to critique you and they're, you're going to require all kinds of stuff you need to send. The smaller data pen services, yeah, there, there's an application process and things like that. But once you get in, yeah, they're going to be your best friend. And that's one of the reasons why I was, uh, I was recommending private data pen services because they're a smaller one. They are growing, you know, maybe in a couple of years now, they're going to be pro pretty darn huge. And if that's the case, you know, they're, they're pricing may go up or down or the quality might come down. I don't know that uh, for a fact, but at least right now as it stands, they're really, really good. Okay. So that's what I got for you in this training. So let's go ahead and recap. Why should you buy data and append your data? Number one, we talked about what type of data should I buy? And I showed you exactly how and the actual reason why you should buy the data, right? On the phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, you should always go after what phase three, phase four data. We talked about what is a data pending services. They'll actually give you phone numbers and emails. If you send them your data, we talked about strategy of owning the farm versus leasing a farm. You're learning how to create your own farm to own your farm. And uh, we talked about when you append data, you can shotgun market and you can sniper rifle market, right? So you can have a very targeted list as well as you can have a very broad list and just do a blanket offer, right? And we talked about it's the cheapest way to generate your own targeted leads. Just like we talked about appending the data, it can be a less than a dollar or something like that. So if you buy leads for like three, four, five, ten, twenty dollars or whatever, or generating them online, it costing three, five dollars and, and you're only getting email. This one, you're getting actual phone numbers and emails and uh, you know that it's really good. All right. So hope you enjoyed this. Please go to the next training uh, video. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that training. And if you did, I want to kind of elevate that training even more and expand your mind because I'm a firm believer that once your mind expands, it will never go back to its original state. So I kind of created this uh, um, reverse triangle hierarchy of who has the most cost effective data in terms of data pending. And it boils down to literally these three tiers. Okay. So tier one vendors are credit agencies, the big three credit agencies. So who are they? TransUnion, Equifax, Experian, all right? So any of the data appending companies or when you append data, okay, because these credit agency has a department for data appending, all right? But these agencies are really difficult to get an account from them, all right? And not only is it very difficult, but it's very, very expensive. Okay. It's very, very expensive unless you are getting like million records at a time or something like that. And if you do that, then the cost comes down based on volume. All right. But when it comes to people in the individual space of like real estate, right, they don't want to give you an account for this. All right. Because they know that you're only going to ask for maybe a couple hundred, maybe a couple thousand if you're a heavy hitter. All right. And if you're a super heavy hitter, maybe you'll ask for a couple tens of thousands. Okay. Like in my case, I do buy tens and tens of thousands of records. Okay. Um, working with my private clients and stuff like that. But this is the one of the reasons why they're kind of at the top. Okay. Meaning that they're the most expensive as well as they have the most data and the most accurate data. So that's why this triangle at the top is a reverse uh, triangle is that they have the most data. 
And then from there, the data trickles down to the tier two vendors. And who are the tier two vendors? Okay, these are literally like boutique marketing agencies. All right, or specialized marketing agencies that do like data pending and or work with direct response marketers, all right, and or list brokers is another one. These are all tier two vendors, meaning that the data that they get, typically they get from tier one vendors and other data sources that internally that they harvested or they actually have a relationship with, um, with other tier two vendors and they're manually quote unquote data appending and adding the records to update your data sheet. Okay. So these, these are two uh, tier two data vendors. All right. And then the last but not least is we have our tier three vendors and you can see here on this triangle, it's literally at the bottom. Why is because they have like typically the worst data, all right, the worst data. And why are they bad is because they are the super big companies. All right. Some companies you may have heard of like white pages. They have something called reverse address searches. If you haven't, you know, did something like that. Okay. Intilius, another one, right? Spokio. Okay. People finders. They are considered essentially really a data appending company. Okay. But because they're tier three vendors and because they're a big company, their business models sell as much leads as we can to append much data as we can and then just charge people pennies. And because of that, their data is typically outdated and it's really, really old, okay? So when it comes to who's the most cost-effective data provider for data appending, okay, meaning like you wanna append your data, who's the most cost-effective, cost the magic is in the tier two vendors. All right, the tier two vendors. And those are some of the examples that you heard earlier um, that I talked about. Now, there are some pros and cons of tier two vendors is that some, as they start growing and growing really, really big, then they start jacking up their prices. All right now, nothing's wrong with that and you can't hate on them for that. Okay, so what you have to do is continuously find a new tier two vendors and you have to vet them out and you have to actually buy data, you know, append data and then see how good their data is. Okay, now rest assured in this particular training, okay, I've done that and that's why you saw the other lead vendor or you can try one of the newest one that I've tried out, which is damn good and then the price is really, really great and which all has to do with this updated new vendor that I am using currently right now as well as I tell anyone who's interested in this about this, okay? So here's how it works, all right? Now, as you can tell, um, their process is really, really simple, okay? And they're just get, they're just starting off, but their data is damn accurate and they're adding additional services for it where you're absolutely going to love, especially if you're like an investor, um, a wholesaler, rehabber, developer, or if you want to even get into that realm, this is going to absolutely help you. So here's how it works, okay? First, you got to submit your list of leads to this email address that you see right on the screen here. So again, if you're listening to this audio version, the email address is bmmarketinggroup at gmail.com. And in the subject line, put your name, location, and the type of lead, like FESBO, expired, foreclosures, inheritance, absentees, right? Whatever it is, put that in there. And then number two, provide uh, them with their PayPal account info for billing, because they're gonna bill you, okay? Send you an invoice. And then number three, they will go to work soaring the web and cross-referencing multiple database and return your spreadsheet with the list that includes the list of potential phone numbers, okay? Potential phone numbers. They're gonna give you the list. So this is a manual data appending that they do. And this is one of the reasons why they can keep the cost low. And number four, if your list is quote unquote inheritance or a probate, right? So as I said earlier, this is great for um, investors or even great for uh, rehabbers, wholesalers, developers, even for realtors. And if you're into uh, doing probate, this is great for you. They will not only skip trace and or quote unquote data pen the owner, uh, but the family as well to improve on your connection ratio. And if you have vacant properties like return mailers, right? Like you send out postcards and you got return mailers, right? Or anything like that, they will scrub the records to get you access to the most up-to-date mailing address as well. Okay, so these are added services. And the pricing model is really simple. It's monthly, no contract or anything like that. So zero to 500 leads, they do 75 cents per lead for 501 to 1,065, 1,000 to 3,000, it will be 55 and 3,000 plus, it'll be 50 cents per lead. In my case, every single time I do this, I always do like 5,000, 10,000 plus, okay? 
please remember this, okay? You do not get billed for any leads that they can't find. If you send them a list of 1,000 and they only were able to append or find the phone numbers of 980, okay, they will only bill you for the 980, all right? And for the folks that are heavy hitters, if you're listening to this, okay, just know that once you have done over 10,000 leads with them, okay, uh, they will go ahead and leave you at the lowest tier pricing indefinitely which is super cool too. So I highly recommend for you to actually lock it in and uh, get your pricing grandfathered in um, at the lowest tier possible. Um, and that's my recommendation to you and that's what I have done um, because the pricings do change with tier two uh, companies. Uh, the data quality never changes, okay? But the pricing does change because again, keep in mind, as they're growing, they're looking for what? clients or customers that are going to append data in bulk. I'm talking about like hundreds of thousands. Okay. So as they're starting up their business, they'll take on smaller clients. Um, but as they scale, they're going to stop working with the smaller clients. It's just the way it is in this business. All right. So now let's go and get into the next one is how an appended data will look like. So how does appended data look like? Because people say, well, Jeff, I understand conceptually what you mean by appended data, and I understand that if I give some the appending da data appending company, like the one you just said right now, and I give them a property address, they're gonna give me a phone number, and that phone number being cell phones and stuff like that. But how does it really look like? All right, so instead of me explaining it to you, I figured that again, I took out a training from uh, a training from my uh, coaching program, my one year coaching program, um, and I decided to insert this video right after this. So here is the training video. It's short and sweet, ladies and gentlemen. So here it goes. All right, so in this video, I am gonna show you how an appended data will look like. And you can say data or data, either way, it doesn't really matter. And I'm also gonna talk about what you need to do and what you need to focus on. So as we go into this particular uh, training, uh, we're also gonna cover why this is still the fastest way to build your list, AKA harvest your own lead. So if you ever heard the term your net worth is the size of your network. You're about to see how you can increase your network of sellers and buyers with just a few clicks of a button, right? So, and then we're also gonna talk about exactly how the data will look like. Now, if you're anything like me, and I think you are, uh, you probably wanna see it with your own eyes. Now, if you are looking at this, promise me that you're not gonna call these people or email these people, because I'm, uh, or most likely I'm probably gonna block this information, right? But I'm gonna show it to you, okay? Now, exactly how the data will look like, we just talked about things to watch out for and things things you must do. So make sure you have a pen and paper uh, as I pull up that spreadsheet right now. All right, so what you're currently looking at right now is an eviction list in Los Angeles County that I had appended. So you can see here, first off, the lead count, the county name, the state, the file date, the plaintiff. Now, if you don't know what a plaintiff is, uh, probably this is not a list that you wanna go after. So uh, plaintiff meaning that, hey, in the state of uh, California to evict someone, you actually, it's a civil lawsuit, so they're actually, quote unquote, essentially suing the other person, right? So you have the information here and then as we go through here this is a total records of if you keep on scrolling down 145 records that are sitting in here for in this particular month that you're watching this is in the month of April if you're watching this at a later time obviously it changes right because based on the number of filings okay so as you're going through this once the data is appended it comes back like this okay so originally this information here the phone number and email was not in here so it was like hidden like this right so so this is the raw data tape look like, right? I had the plaintiff's name, plaintiff's last name, and key note here, okay? You gotta have the first name in one column. You gotta have the last name in a different column, okay? Then you have the defendant's first name, right? So the person they're trying to evict in this case, because remember, it's a lawsuit, so they're trying to, quote unquote, uh, protect themselves or defend themselves, right? So, okay, so they're uh, list as a defendant. And then as well as there's the parcel number uh, that's actually for the property that they're evicting. There's the case number document type obviously is this an eviction and the physical property address to this the property city state and the legal description of the actual what case and then when you go through here this actual date there's the city mailing state okay um the, even the plaintiff attorney um i highly recommend don't call the plaintiff attorney not my uh you know i don't recommend that uh there's one of our favorite uh, attorneys here Den uh, uh, D, uh, D block and a 
associates, as I like to call it, right? One of the big guys. I've used them multiple, multiple times. And you can see here, um, and again, this is it right here. So when you actually get the data and it comes back as appended, it will look like this. So now let me go and unhide uh, the actual phone number and you'll see. So when I unhide this, uh, where is the phone number? It should show up actually right here. Um, let me unhide. Oopsie, hold on. How come it's not unhiding? And when I'm doing it live, sometimes uh, you get in trouble for this. Uh, all right, perfect. Now, when you do this, you can see here, you have multiple phone numbers. So out of 145 records, we have a total count of phone numbers in here, 169. Now, keep in mind, we didn't get a hit on, uh, um, you know, it was a lower count hit on this one because of the, maybe the data that we put in. But then you also have emails as well. So 167 phone numbers, as well as we have 43 emails that we can go after. And look at this one, for example, right? It gives you different email addresses. Now, clearly, this, this one is probably not a good one, uh, but you have the Nelly Nieto at Hotmail, uh, Neaton at AOL.com, right? You have this one. Uh, clearly, this is in the, they're in Ameritrade. Um, Ameritrade is probably uh, is not a good email, but this AOL one might be or the Hotmail one might be, okay? And uh, you see here some of the other emails, right? You can see here, you can see here, right? So again, these are the type of different types of emails that you can get, and my recommendation to, is to market to all of those. So uh, let me go and show you another example all right so here's another data tape okay that I'm going to show you uh, for the sake of this example okay results in advance right I want to show you exactly uh, what you can get out of this right um, so again this one is Orange County uh, properties uh, you know, Orange County homeowners that are in bankruptcy that happens to own real estate. Okay. You might be surprised. There's a people who are in Orange County that are in bankruptcy that owns real estate. So, uh, here it is. There's a tax owner's name, tax owner's first name, tax owner's last name. The borrower should be typically as the same as the owner, right? Uh, site address, uh, you have the zip code and here it is. Here's the data that we have appended, um, out of 327 records, we have total of, uh, 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 1100 phone numbers. Now you might say, how do you get 1100 phone numbers out of, of what did I say? A 327 record is this, is that it's giving you multiple phone numbers, right? So some might, might be, uh, the phone number to the wife. Another one might be the phone number to the husband and one might be like the second phone number. Right. And like my case, I got like three phone numbers, right? So, um, so that's what we got. All right. Now, as well as here's the actual email. So here's all the different emails that you can get as well. Okay. Um, again, total emails, 200, 57 emails out of 327 records or so as I said earlier right so you can see here this was an example look at this right uh, again some are hotmail some are MSN some are Yahoo okay and you can see here right so again recommendation market to all of those now let me show you another example here we go. So this one's an interesting one. This one is a campaign called the Luxury Condo Campaign uh, that I run here in locally here in Southern California. Um, again, don't worry about too much about the campaign because you're going to see it in your own uh, in a different module. But here's a campaign, right? This, these are in the, the actual corridors, as I like to call it. So again, these people have uh, high end uh, condos um, in the area that's 90017. So it's corridors, OK, um, typically in the million dollar ranges. So again, we have the owner's name the actual address right you might ask where did I physically get this property address well I got this data through using public records uh, by actually putting in 1100 Wilshire Boulevard without the actual apartment number and it actually pulled up all the apartments on that building I extracted that put it in here and then got the owner information appended the data so but the point is let me show you the actual phone number all right so here's one for absentee owners and you can see here this one's in uh, Union City apps uh, absentee owners so you can see here uh, we have a total records in this case 1400 records in here um, and then you can see phone numbers let's see we have a total of 6828 phone numbers now uh, the first two always in line is the top considered like the top phone number so that's 2100 then the first one is considered the best phone number and that's about a thousand sixty six so um, and and so this these records are really pretty darn good in my opinion and then total email we have have is 1800 records there um, so those are some of the examples that uh, we have 
So by now watching this video, uh, you understand this is the fastest way to build your list because you saw it with your own eyes on how quickly you can get phone numbers and emails so you can market to them. And also this is exactly how uh, the data will look like. So you saw the example of how the actual appended data will look like and then the amount of emails that you can get, amount of phone numbers you can get. Uh, we talked about things to watch out for where we talked about the columns that you need to separate them between the first name, last name. Okay, we talked about that. Uh, the site address and and then the full address for the property, right? And things you gotta do is making sure you gotta get great data first because if you don't have great data, the crappy data in, you'll get crappy data out. All right. Hope you enjoyed that particular training. So now that you understand how data pending companies work, right? We just talked about that. As well as I've given you uh, the companies that you can append data with. And then as, as well as I have now physically shown you how appended data looks like for my own business, right? Let me go ahead and give you kind of the step-by-step -step process, all right? So this one, the next training that's coming up is a step number one, picking a data source. How to pick a data source, meaning which type of data should I append first, all right? Because people are saying, well, I get all of this. Now I know I can get phone numbers for basically anyone now, but who should I go after? Right? So let me insert a training video from my one year coaching program right here. All right. So in this video, I'm going to talk about where can I get the data or in your case, where can you get the data to market to sellers or buyers to actually have them call you. So in this case, we're going to be using predominantly sellers as an example. So let me show you how. So first off, using the direct bypass communication marketing for sellers that will call you, there's a couple of these, right? You can just uh, write them down by pausing the video and actually writing them all down or follow this video as we're going through this and you'll be able to see exactly where you can get the data. So that way, once you get the data, you can go ahead and get it appended to physically get the phone numbers and emails to market to them. So for example, expired and and canceled. So if you want to go ahead and market to expires and cancels, where do you get it from? Well, you can buy them from places like Red X and things like that. That's going to charge you an arm and a leg for that information. Or what we actually say is what? Don't lease the farm, but build your farm, right? Control the farm yourself. Where can you get it from? Well, the MLS, you can go directly to your MLS and extract that information or that data, the expires and cancels directly out through the MLS. And then you can append it to actually get the phone numbers and emails, right? Pretty cool, right? Now, what about for uh, pre foreclosures, probate, uh, property violation lists? Okay. Well, uh, there is a free source that you can actually use to get all of this information. Uh, you can actually go to a uh, public record or a company uh, that provides this. So for things like pre foreclosure, um, foreclosure notice of defaults, notice of trustee, there are servicers that you can actually go to uh, to get that. Um, in Southern California or in California, I use something called property uh, radar. Uh, probate is another one. You can actually subscribe to a company to get probate, uh, you know, mailing address, then go ahead and append that property violation. You can get them from sites, eviction list, same things, tax liens, right? Same thing. All right. Now, what are other things that you can do like absentee owners? Okay. If you want to go after absentee owners, people that don't live in the actual property, okay, typically has them rented out while well, you can go to a title company or use something like a realist on your MLS to actually extract and download that. Um, here's some couple other ones, right? Like probate, property violation, divorce, post divorce, bankruptcy, inheritance, okay? Um, these are a little bit harder to find, but if you are interested, the servicers that we recommend, um, as I always say, is the attorney leads on demand. Uh, just feel free to just shoot an email to uh, Don uh, right on the screen, and he can help you out and give you pricing and things like that, all right? Um, so that's it. So again, going back to the list of sellers that you can go on, what I want you to currently do right now at this moment is to go ahead and figure out which one you go on. You want to go after, uh, you know, your market better than I do. So go ahead and pick a market that you can know if you only had the phone number and email. And if you only have to just talk to them, you know, you can convert them, go after those, put that data together. So that way you can go ahead and now take that data, send it to get it to a pen so you can get the phone number and email. So please go to the next training video. All right. Hope you enjoyed that particular video. It was very short and sweet and hope you understand um, what it takes to pick the right data source. Okay. And uh, this section alone, technically in, in the training, I go really, really in depth on this with the people I work with because it's really important to uh, pick the right data source. Okay. Now this next step is once you pick the right data source is step number two is to put the spreadsheet together.
You got to put the spreadsheet together, ladies and gentlemen. All right. This is maybe the only thing if you're not technically quote unquote tech savvy that you may have some challenges on. But if you do, you can always hire an assistant or hire people on Fiverr or something like that or Upwork or a virtual assistant or someone to help you out with this. Okay. This is really easy. Um, as well as uh, some of the stuff that I'll talk about in this particular training is that you can literally export this spreadsheet from uh, your MLS like Realix and stuff like that. Okay. So again, I'm going to insert the video training for step number two, how to put the spreadsheet together. And this training comes from uh, my high end uh, coaching program, my one year program, and I'm going to insert it and you can watch it right now. All right. So in this video, I'm going to cover how to actually put the spreadsheet together. I know it sounds kind of weird. Okay. But really the easiest way is to, uh, just download it from places where you can just export data. That's the easiest way. Okay. Um, but if you have to physically kind of copy and paste or have someone on your team, copy and paste that information, then, um, this is how it needs to look like. Okay. Um, in this case, the example I'm showing you right now is this is a campaign that, uh, I'm going to be running. Uh, this is for an absentee owner campaign in in uh, Southern California in a place called Santa Ana. And you can see here on the label here, it says Santa Ana absentee owners, CLTV stand for cumulative loan to value of 80% and under SFR. So this is a single family residence. Now, why am I going, sa going after Santa Ana is because uh, we're going to be testing out a Spanish campaign and doing a Spanish campaign in this particular area. And Santa Ana has a lot of Hispanic uh, families, okay, and Hispanic names. All right. Now you might say a last name like Paul Lee probably isn't Hispanic, but again, a Garcia, right? Uh, you see there, right? Okay, now Tang isn't Nguyenism, but uh, you see a Gonzalez, okay, <laughs> and things like that, all right? So um, so what you need to have on your data sheet, as I always recommend, is the, the bare minimum that you have to have is the address, you need to have the city, you need to have the state, and you need to have the zip of the actual physical property address, okay? So the location of the property, you need to have that. And then you need to have, all right, the owner's first name. All right, this is what's required. Now the sheet, this particular information I extracted from, I believe a place called Property Radar or possibly the MLS, I'm not exactly sure. But you can see here, the owner's first name. So you need to have the owner's first name. Uh, you need to have the actual owner's last name, uh, the spouse's first name, and then owner two, right? Which is kind of like, yeah, the last name. And then you want the owner's address as well, okay? Um, that's really important, owner's address, okay? Um, and then the owner's state, the owner's zip, okay? These are real important. And that's pretty much it. The rest of the information you really don't need, but the place that I downloaded this information to give you all this information, right? Uh, transfer amount, the first loan amount, right? First, second lender, right? They give you all this information, which is good to have, so you can have it. Um, AVM, give you that equity percent estimated loan balance, even the estimated, as I said, the AVM, the estimated value, the specs of the home and things like that, right? So, but to really, to append it, this is all alls you need, which is a property address, the city, uh, the state, the zip of the actual property, okay, the physical property location, the owner's first name in the column, owner's last name in the column. If there's a second owner, like a wife, you need the owner's, you know, second first name here, the owner's second owner last name here, and then the owner's actual address here. And when you get this, then you can send it to the pen company and they can append it and give you phone numbers and emails. All right. Uh, so please go to the next training video. Hope you have this uh, video, uh, this already ready. So that way you can go ahead and submit it to them. All right, that completed step number two on putting the spreadsheet together. And now you can physically see how you want to put your spreadsheet together. And the biggest thing I want you to take away is that you got to do it in CSV file and you have to have like Excel. Okay. And it's really important for you to do that. Why is because if you haven't caught on, these data appending companies really do not like to work with small, small, dinky little companies. Um, why is because their ambition is to, guess what, work with clients that will append 10,000 plus, 100,000 plus, 500,000 plus, a million plus records because, again, it's a volume business. All right? So, again, let's go ahead and now go to the next step, which is step number three which is pretty darn important, okay? Which is how to submit your data to be appended. So again, step number three is how to submit data to be appended, all right? Now, in this particular training, we're really, really going to talk about 
the importance of how you submit the data to be appended. Okay. It's really important to understand this because if you screw this up and the other side, meaning the data appending company, like in tier two, okay, they're really, really picky of who they work with. So if they, for whatever reason, sense that you don't know what you're talking about or what you're doing, then guess what? They're going to either stop communicating with you or two, they're not going to append your data at all. Okay. Now you might be like, why would they do such a thing is because you have to understand the trickle down effect of what I said earlier of tier one, tier two, and tier three is that tier two vendors, all right, is getting data typically from the tier one vendors, meaning that the data is being trickled down from them. And because they know that their data is really, really good, they just don't want to work with a, with a client that's a pain in the butt. And with all means, they have the right to do so, right? Like, have you ever worked with a seller or buyer that was just a pain in the butt and you were just like, screw it, I'm gonna fire them. I have many times, okay? And they're gonna do the exact same thing if you're not careful and you don't pay attention to how to submit the data to be appended. So let me go ahead and play this short uh, video for you on how to submit the data uh, to a data appending service and uh, how you can get started. So again, this training is from my uh, one-year coaching program for my high-end clients that I work with. So here is the video training right now. All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to get your data appended. Now, before I show you exactly how to append and send that email and how to communicate with the people that are going to append it, um, let me kind of recap what is data appending, okay? It's really quite easy. It's three simple steps, which is you get your raw data or your raw data tape. You forward it to an append service or data appending service. And when you forward it to them, they're going to come back with the actual appended data, meaning that they're going to add extra information uh, to your data. In this case, they're going to add phone numbers and emails. All right. Now, when you do that, most data pen services require a monthly spend where you have to spend a certain amount of money. Okay. Typically in the tens of thousands, or it can cost anywhere from a dollar to $2 a record that they append. Plus they actually have a setup fee. All right. Now, obviously in this case, uh, there isn't, but, uh, the company that we recommend, but the reason why you want to append those is, as I said, when you get phone numbers and emails, the emails, you can use certain campaigns that we talk about a lot is like the get business today campaigns, right? You can use the emails to send out the get business today, email campaigns and start converting, uh, actual sellers and buyers and working with you. And here's a prime example from a gentleman named Chris Tanner doing amazing stuff. Got a $340,000 listing today by just by using this particular campaign. All right. So going back to uh, the data pen, get the data, raw data. You should know how to do which, you know, how to get the data already and then a pen service and then get your phone numbers and emails. All right. So where do you go to actually get the data appended here? You go to the private data pen Uh, you're going to go ahead and email, uh, John at private data pen services.com. And, uh, you'll be able to, uh, you know, have him work with him and find out the pricing from him directly. Um, again, as I said, when you're talking to sellers or buyers, never disclose to sellers or buyers where you are buying the data from. If anyone asks, just say public records, then pivot and go into a pitch. Okay. Now keep in mind, smaller companies, uh, but they seem to have the best data that I personally have ever tested. No setup fee. As I said, that's huge. No setup fees. Uh, so that means that you can append more data and they typically charge about a dollar per appended record on phone number plus emails. If you just want phone number or if you want email, they just, they do charge a little bit less than that. And obviously if you do anything above a certain amount, they're going to give you some price discount. So ask John about that as well. So please go to the next training module. All right. Very short video, right? But hopefully you understand some of the important things that I'm talking about in today's podcast episode, because it is key, ladies and gentlemen, how you do anything is how you do everything, meaning the devil's in the details, ladies and gentlemen. And what you do not want to do is to be put on literally the blacklist of a tier two data pending company, because if they are good and they're great, okay, you don't, you don't want them to cut you off. Okay. So please, please act as if you know what you're doing. Okay. So let's go ahead and recap what we talked about on this training. So step number one, figure out your best clients. You saw a video training on that. Step number two, get the raw data, the CSV file, 
right? We talked about that in the video as well. Step number three is submit the file to the data pending company. And I also gave you a data co a pending company as well. Step number four is to receive the phone numbers, emails or both. Okay. So once you submit it, right. And they send the file back to you, that file will have the phone numbers, emails or both, depending on what you choose. If you want phone numbers and emails or just phone numbers, right? I highly recommend people to get both. All right. Um, but you can just get phone numbers as well. Okay. That's step number four. And then it goes into step number five. And now step number five alone, um, is a whole series of podcasts I can do on this. But bottom line is that if you're listening to my voice and I know you are because you're still here with me is that I have an assumption that you know what to do when you actually get people's phone numbers, like their cell phones, hopefully you'll what call them. Hopefully, maybe you'll even text them. Maybe you'll do something that we do, um, which I don't openly talk about, which is something called direct bypass marketing or direct bypass communication marketing, which is a really, really powerful, powerful tool. So if you're interested in that, make sure you uh, give me feedback and shoot me an email at jeff at realestatestrategylab.net and let me know if you're interested on that and I can do a series on that. Okay. So step five, call text, direct bypass, or you can email, or here is the, one of the most genius ways to use appended data is to upload for retargeting or remarketing. All right. What is retargeting is being able to take your phone number, right? And your email address that you can get from data pending and uploading them into Facebook right? That data is so accurate. You want to upload into Facebook and now you have a custom audience on Facebook to run ads in front of those people, All right? Remarketing stands for, uh, the same thing as retargeting on Facebook, but it's on what Google platform. So you can take the same data pendant, upload it into Google to run remarketing campaigns. And now you can run ads in front of them on Google display network. So their ads are following them everywhere that ad sense is placed on as well as, uh, the YouTube platform as well. Like if a video ad right before the YouTube video starts, right? You can have that or the best thing. And my best clients literally do all of the above. All right now, not to say you have to absolutely do all the above. Okay. I have folks in here that I've worked with that they only have cell phone and email and they do well over, you know, 300,000, 400,000, 500,000, uh, GCI in the real estate agency world, as well as real estate investor world. Okay. So it's not required. All right. But if you have like a brokerage and you have teams and stuff like that, or you're trying to build out a team, these are amazing things that you want to absolutely add to, uh, your tool belt when it comes to uh, lead generation and converting your, your leads. So this is the end of season two, episode four, how to never buy leads from lead vendors and how to har harvest and how to harvest your own leads. So I have a question for you. Did you enjoy this training? Or do you have more questions, right? If you did, you probably most likely want my help and working together with you. So because of that, I decided to create a group coaching accelerator program. Now, why is it a group coaching is because it's physically impossible for me to work with so many people one on one basis because I still, I have my clients that I work with. So what I decided to do is to do the next best thing is to be able to do a group coaching model where I actually do weekly trainings and talk about these types of strategies and talk about how you can apply this in your business, regardless if you're a real estate agent, you run a big brokerage or a boutique brokerage, a smaller brokerage, you run a team. If you're a rehabber, if you're a wholesaler developer, if you're a loan originator, you can do it nationwide or only licensed in certain States, right? Um, regardless of what it is, I work with all of them in the space of real estate. Okay. So instead of doing it on one-on-one -on -one basis, because unfortunately I'm running my own real estate business, right? I decided to do a group coaching program and this is called an accelerator because it is going to literally help you accelerate the growth of your business by understanding again, the arithmetic of your business. Okay. So enroll in my group coaching program, um, called the business accelerator program. So enroll in my group coaching business accelerator program called the lab. And currently I'm doing a special $1 trial for 30 days until we get 500 members and I'm only accepting. Okay. 10 members per each city, right? 10 members. That's it. 
All right now, why am I doing that? Is because of the stuff that I talk about. Okay, I just can't have copycats or start having you guys and gals start sounding like an echo uh, because I do this for my own business as well as my clients. Okay, so I have to protect the integrity of what we have going on. And this is the reason why this business accelerator program is called the lab is because we test things in there. Okay. We test stuff in there that my private clients do. Okay. And then I kind of bring it down to this group coaching program. So again, if you're interested in this, again, I'm not trying to hard sell you. Um, I hope if you're listening to this this far, you've seen the value on it. So just imagine what an actual structured accelerator program will do for your business. So all you have to do is go to giftfromjeff.com forward slash dollar trial to get more information and you'll be able to find out how it works, how much it costs afterwards and things like that. So again, go to giftfromjeff.com forward slash dollar trial to check it out. And uh, that's all I have for you on this episode, season two, episode four of Real Estate Strategy Lab. And I hope to talk to you next week. So I love you guys. Take care and bye-bye.